So in this lecture, we will be looking at the SQL group by statement. So it's important to pay careful attention because this is where SQL can start to get a little tricky. But if you kind of understand it, it's pretty straightforward. So the group by statement is used to group rows that have the same values into summary rows. So again, we got to keep in mind that in SQL, we are looking at our data and we are trying to pull this data out so that we can manipulate it in different ways. And one of the ways that we would like to look at data is by grouping data that have similar values and then we can apply functions such as count, max, min, sum, and average on it. So I've provided you also the link in W3 schools because always keep that in mind as well that this is another resource that you can go to. The SQL group by is explained here with many different types of examples. So that is an additional resource as well for you to refer to. So what exactly is the group by statement? So the group by statement works for columns that have values or records that repeat more than one time. So this is an example here where we are looking at our customer table. And when you look at values in the customer table, we can see that values, for example, country is repeating more than once because you have customers from the same country. So typical questions that a business would possibly want to know is I want to see each country listed and the total number of customers from or the count of the customers from those countries. So that could be an example of how we would want to use the group by statement. So again, keep the syntax for the group by. We have your select from and if you have a where condition, you're going to put that there. And then we have our group by. And then finally, we have our order by if we want to sort the results in a particular order. So let's go ahead and see how we can write a query to find the number of customers per country. So essentially what we are trying to look is we want to list out each country and we want to count then group it and count how many. So we're looking at how many customers are there in that particular country. So our select statement would say select country and then we have our count built-in function where we're going to put the column name of country there as number of customers. This is the alias name that we're giving to the column. Of course, we are pulling this from the customer table and here's where we, this is the key here. We're going to say group by and it's important to put the column that has the repeating values that you want to group by. So in this particular case, we want to see it each by each country. So it's important that we put country in the group by statement. And when we say order by country, it's going to sort the results by country in ascending order. So let's go ahead and look at this in SQL. Um, so I have my query here that I have written. It's select country. We're counting from customer group by country, order by country. So let's go ahead, select this and run it. And as you can see in your result grid here, we are seeing each country and then it's showing us that this is the number of times this country is repeating in the customer table. So essentially it refers to the number of customers because we're keeping track of customers in the country table. And then it's going to list each country by um, the customer. Since we said order by country, it's going to order the results by the country. And since we did not put anything here, it's going to by default sort it in ascending order. You could have sorted the result by the number of customers. You just have to put number of customer instead of country here. So essentially, like we can also look at different groups. So for example, if I come to my customer table and hit on the spreadsheet symbol, it does a select every record from my customer table. And if I do sort my city here, I can see that city is also a field that is repeating more than one time because you have uh, customers, for example, from London, you see that you have many customers from London. So if I want to write uh, this very similar query, but this time I want to see the count by the number of customers from every city. I can come here and try my second query here in my select. I'm going to put city because I want to see each city and I'm going to count the city as the number of customers city from customer. And here it's important to note that in my group by I'm putting city because then the query is going to take each city and then group it together and it's going to count how many times it's repeating. And in this time I've put order by number of customer in descending order. So it's going to show me the most customers first and then the second. So let's go ahead and look at this in SQL Workbench. 
So I have my um, second query here where I say select city. I'm counting city from customer group by city, order by number city. So I'm going to come here, run this, and this time you see how it's showing me London as the top value with the number of customers as six, followed by Mexico, and so on and so forth. So again, this is a different way of us applying the group by statement, but this time we're grouping it by city. So let's look at another application of the group by, again, we're going to use a different table this time. So this query, we are going to show the sum of the total amount for each customer from the orders table. So let's take a look at this query here. We have select customer ID, and then we're using our built-in sum, and then we want to sum the total amount as total purchases. This time we are bringing it from the orders table and we are grouping it by the customer ID. So let's first go ahead and look at this orders table because it's important to have an idea of the data that you're looking at. So I'm going to come here and hit on the spreadsheet symbol here. And I'm going to click on customer ID so that it sorts it by the customer ID. And as you can see here, I have repeating values for customer ID. Customer ID one is repeating multiple times. And so I have many other customer IDs essentially what this is showing you is in the orders table, it's showing all the orders that all the customers have made and the same customer can make many different orders. So essentially what this query is trying to find is I want to group each customer ID and I want to see the total or the sum of this total amount column that each customer has purchased. So this is my query here. I'm saying select customer ID, sum total amount as total purchases from orders. Again, it's important that I'm putting group by customer ID here, and then I'm ordering it by the customer ID. So it's going to show it in ascending order by the customer ID. So when I run this query, this is my results here. I have customer ID. This is the total amount purchased, customer ID two, and so on. So if I wanted to sort it by total purchases, I could have changed my order by to total purchases. And this is important for businesses because if you think about this from a business perspective, it lets us see who are our customers that are the top purchases or making the least amount of purchases. So this is good insight from a business perspective. So let's look at another query here of using the group by statement, but this time I'm adding more than one um, column in my group by statement. So you can add multiple columns to your group by statement. Essentially, I want to see the number of customers by each city in every country. So it's going to repeat that country multiple times and it's going to show each city and then it's going to show the count of the number of customers by city. So I have my select, I have my country, city, and this time I'm going to say count city as count customer city from customer and in my group by I'm going to put country. So it's going to group it by the country and then it's going to group it by the city and then I'm sorting it by country. So let's go ahead and look at this query in SQL. I have this typed out here exactly the same way. I'm going to come select this and run it. And as you can see here, it's showing me each country and country has multiple cities. It's going to repeat those cities and then it's going to show the number of customers by each of those cities. So keep in mind that I have sorted my results in ascending order by the country, but depending on what you're exactly trying to analyze, you could order it by the count customer or whatever you're trying to look at. So let's look at the practice query. So try to write this query by the yourself. Write an SQL query that shows the supplier ID and the number of products supplied by the supplier ID with an alias count product supply. The results should be sorted by supplier ID in ascending order. So essentially to work on this query, it's important for us to first recognize which table do we go to pull this data from. So um, if we look at it, it's asking for the supplier ID and the number of products supplied by the supplier. So if we go to the supplier table and if we look at the data in the supplier table, supplier ID is the primary key and supplier ID would only appear once in the supplier table. So this would definitely not be the table where we're going to go and pull this data from. On the other hand, if we come to the product table and look at the data in the table, and you can see that you have the same supplier ID that's repeating multiple times in this table. Essentially, what we are trying to do is we are trying to see, we want to list each supplier ID and we want to count how many times this supplier ID is repeating in the table. 
So that is important to recognize. So in my select statement, I'm going to say select supplier ID, and then I'm going to count supplier ID and give it the alias name count product supplied. Of course, this is coming from the product table. We need to group it by the supplier ID because we want to see each supplier ID and we're counting how many times it's appearing. And the question says to sort it by supplier ID in ascending order. So I have my order by. I'm going to come select this and run it. And as you can see, it shows each supplier ID and the count of the number of products that is supplied. So you can always change your sort to sort it by the count product supplied in ascending, descending. But again, this is also valuable data for a business because you want to know how many products each supplier is supplying to your company. So um, important note again is in SQL, built-in functions cannot be used in the where clause. So for example, we cannot say select star from orders where some total amount greater than 20. We never have built-in functions in our where clause. So that's important to keep in mind. So when we have, when we are using our group by, if we want to have an additional condition where we are saying that we want to see um, the count when the count is greater than a particular value, less than a particular value, or we want to say um, when the sum or min or whatever we are trying to look, we have our having clause that we use. So the having clause was added to SQL because the where keyword could not be used with aggregate functions. So this is the syntax for your having clause. We do our select from, if we have where conditions, we are going to add it. We have group by and then we add our having with a particular condition and finally we have our order by statement. So let's go ahead and look at some examples here. Here in query six, what we are trying to do is we want to show each country and the number of customers from each country. And we have already done this query as our first query, but we have an added condition here. If the count number of customers from each country is greater than or equal to five. So we only want to see the results where the count is greater than or equal to five. So we cannot put this um, condition in a where clause. So that's why we have to use a having clause. So essentially we have select country and then we have our count from customer group by country. So if you recall, we have actually written this query just now, but now we are adding an added condition where we want to only see the country if this count is greater than or equal to five. So when we have a condition like that, we're going to use our having clause. And again, we're going to sort this results in ascending order by country. So let's go ahead and look at this query in SQL. So I have my query here that we've just looked at. I'm going to come select this and note here having number of customers greater than or equal to five. So I'm going to come here, select this and run it. And as you can see, it shows me each country and the number of customers, but it will only show me the number of customers if the value is greater than or equal to five. You shouldn't see a four, three, two or one in this result here. So now let's look at another example where we can use our where clause also with the group by and the having. So in this particular query, what we want to see is we want to see each customer ID and the sum of the total amount from the orders table for each customer ID where the order number begins with 543 and the sum of the total amount is greater than or equal to 1000. So when you have a query like that, it's very important that you take it step by step. So we want to start by looking at what needs to go in our select statement. We're looking to find each customer ID and the sum. So we want to make sure in our select statement, we have our customer ID and then we're summing the total amount. So that's why you have some total amount as total purchases because that's the alias name we want to give it. And then this is coming from the orders table because we want to group by each customer ID. But we use our where clause because we have a condition that says the orders table, uh, the order number has to begin with 543. So we are going to say where order number like 543 and our wild um, card, which is the percent sign. So it's going to filter records that have order number 543 in the beginning. And we are going to have our group by statement. But then we also have an additional condition that the sum of the total amount needs to be greater than or equal to 1000. So that's why we have having sum total amount greater than or equal to 1000. And finally, we are going to group it. Uh, we are going to, sorry, we are going to order it by our customer ID. 
So let's go ahead and run this query in SQL. So essentially I'm going to come here, select this query and run it. And you're going to see each customer ID and the total purchases. But keep in mind that this has additional filters because this is only totaling um, purchases that the customer number has made where the order number begins with 543 and the sum. And then when you look at this results, you will never see a sum that's less than 1000. So you only see um, the total purchases that is greater than 1000. So this again takes some time to go through this query step by step, uh, but um, it should be pretty straightforward if you're understanding each and every statement here. So I now have two practice queries for you, query eight and query nine. So I would suggest to take time to read this carefully, uh, pause the video and try to write this by yourself and come back and see if you are able to get your answers for these queries. So query eight, again, we are writing an SQL query that shows the order date and the count of how many orders there were on the date from the orders table. Four orders that have 2014 somewhere in the order date. The count order date can have an alias number of orders. The results should be sorted by order date in ascending order. So that's your query eight. You want to take it step by step. Um, and it says here that it's coming from the orders table. Um, so plan what needs to go in the select from um, and then your where clause, your group by. And then we have query nine here where it's asking for an SQL query that shows the order date and the sum of the total. So here again, we had count, but here it's asking you for the sum of the total amount of orders for orders that have 2014 somewhere in the order date. So it's very similar to this query. The results should show only if the total sum of orders is greater than or equal to 15,000. So this should be an indication for you that we need to use the having clause and the sum should have an alias. So this is the alias name you want to give. And then it's asking you to also sort it by order date in ascending order. So this is our query eight here. We're looking at selecting order date. The question asked to count. So I'm going to count it. And this is the alias name that we are asked and we are pulling this from the order table. We have a where condition because we want to look at order dates that have 2014 somewhere. We're going to group it by the order date because we are looking at each order date and then we're going to um, sort it by order date in ascending order. So I can come here, select my query and exactly it's going to show me the order date and the number of orders that were made. So essentially what I'm looking here is I want to see the number of orders that were made for each date, but I do have a condition I'm interested in 2014 here. Now in query nine, everything is very similar, but the question is asking you for the sum of the total amount. So it's very important to read your query question carefully. The where condition is very similar. The group by is similar, but we do have a having clause based on the question. We want to see uh, where the total amount is greater than or equal to 15,000. And then I'm going to use my order by order date here. So I can come here, select my query, run it, and I should be able to see my results here. Note in this query, instead of some total amount, you could have as well written total sum orders because that's an alias we are already giving to some total amount. 